Good morning. Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> I'm still waiting on a couple of people to come on, but nonetheless, we need to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> I want to welcome you. Good morning to PTP OG, Practicing the Presence of God. Pastor Michael Hayes back with you on this uh, incredibly cloudy <laughs> Sunday morning. It's very cloudy here in uh, the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, but nonetheless, we're glad to have the Lord with us. I pray that you're doing well and that things are going uh, well in your neck of the woods. Uh, I trust and hope that um, you had a good weekend or you're having, I should say, a good weekend. We're not done with the weekend yet, but I pray that you had a restful Sabbath and that uh, things are going well. Uh, with you. God is so good, and uh, we've had so much of a chance to be blessed, uh, you know, in his Sabbath rest on yesterday. It was just really good to be able to just rest a little bit uh, and take a Shabbat, a brief Shabbat, Sabbath. Uh, but nonetheless, we're back at it this morning. How are you guys doing this morning? How's everything going? How's everything with you? Just want you to know that I pray for you all the time. I'm praying for you on a daily basis that the Lord would enrich your life, that he would uh, bless you, that he would protect you from this COVID-19 situation, and uh, that uh, he would give you the grace to come to a better knowledge and understanding of his will for your life, and in fact, to know him better. Glad to have you this morning. Good morning, Elder Jackson. How are you? We're going to look forward in our uh, in our study <clears throat> as we're going through the book of Proverbs, and we're looking today at Proverbs chapter seventeen. Proverbs chapter seventeen, and we're looking at verse number fifteen. So turn with me there if you would. Proverbs chapter seventeen, and we're looking at verses verse number fifteen. The Bible says in Proverbs 17, 15, he that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination to the Lord. I'm going to repeat that again for emphasis before we pray this morning. He that justifies the wicked and he that condemns the just, even they both even they both are an abomination to the Lord. Today, today, we're talking from the subject, the wisdom to judge, the wisdom to judge, Proverbs 17, 15. Let's bow our heads briefly for a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your grace. Your kindness towards us, Lord, is just, uh, it's remarkable. It's uh, incomparable. You love us with a deep and abiding love, and we thank you, Lord, for that grace on a daily basis. Now, Lord, we ask that you would please incorporate your life into ours. Lord, please pour yourself, your grace, your mercy, your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding into our lives, that, Father, we might know you more and that we might love you even more. Thank you for your grace and give us this day our daily bread in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we are looking at Proverbs now. 
And uh, this is a very, very powerful proverb, especially in the climate that we are in today. <laughs> Whew, mercy. The one who justifies the wicked and the one who condemns the just, God sees as an abomination to him. Abomination literally means it is against the very nature of who God is. That's what it means. It means this practice or this uh, circumstance, this habit or this you know, action of whatever it is that is being talked about is completely out of alignment with the will of God, with the character of God, and with the kingdom of God. This will not stand in the kingdom of God. <clears throat> that is essentially what abomination means. It means it is completely, it's not just being detestable. It's not just being, you know, disgusting or despicable, things of that nature. It is counterintuitive. It's counter to the kingdom of God. It works against the kingdom of God. That's what abomination means. If you could just put it in those terms. And that is what we're talking about this morning. We're talking about an abomination. We're talking about something or some things that do not apply to the kingdom of God, that will not stand within the government and the kingdom of God, that cannot be present where God is. <clears throat> so this text is talking about when those, when those who are entrusted with the administration of public justice, of judges and of juries and witnesses and prosecutors and counsels. And when those people, when they do either acquit the guilty or they condemn the innocent or in any way contribute to this line of action, this essentially defeats the purpose of government as God has designed it to be. Government is designed to not just organize, but to protect the good and to punish the bad. I'm gonna say that again. Government is designed not simply for the purpose of organization or organizing things, but government is created for the purpose and is set up for the purpose of condemning the bad and protecting the good. That is the purpose of government. That is any government, including the United States government or any government on this planet. That is its purpose, to protect and to serve but also to punish the bad. Now, we're going to see this in the word of God as we look here and how government is supposed to operate in the book of Romans, chapter 13, reading verse number three and four. Romans chapter 13, reading verses three and four, tell us something significant about how God sees government is supposed to act. Okay, Romans chapter 13, verses three and four says this, for rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong, but for those who do wrong, rulers don't hold terror for those who do right, but they hold it for those who do wrong. They bring fear, they bring terror to those who do wrong. That is what a proper government is supposed to do. Okay, this is uh, Paul writing to the church at Rome. He says this, do you, do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right and you will be commended. Now watch this. Government is supposed to be set up in such a way that you and I are supposed to have a knowledge and an understanding, generally speaking, that if I do what's right, if I choose to do what is good and what is proper, what is 
in alignment with doing what is good, what is righteous, then I'm going to be commended. Are you with me? And I also, obviously, by, uh, um, you know, the opposite of that, I am supposed to be able to understand that a government is going to bring down the fear and wrath, if you will, on those who do what is wrong. Okay, that's, that's the point of government. Now watch this, verse four. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. That is why God allows government. Because they are supposed to be a servant, actually, for God. In that, they're able, and they're able to apply the difference between good and evil. That is the purpose, okay? This is very, very important. I'm setting this up so that we can move forward in this study today. It says, for the one, verse four, for the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Now this is from the, the word of God. So government has been set up to bring punishment against the wrongdoer, not against the innocent. In the same way, government is there to commend the innocent and the good, not to commend those who do evil and who do wrong. Are you all with me today? For example, a murderer should not be raised up as somebody who's a giver of life. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Are you with me? So, you know, it's very important for those who are, if you have, hear me, if you have any amount of power or influence in life, if God has afforded you any opportunity to be in a position of strength, of power, it is incumbent upon you to understand, number one, you are an agent of God and you are there because God has allowed you to be there. So you, first of all, need to be thankful Second of all, you need to see the reality that this is a huge responsibility and it should not go, it should not come lightly upon you. Okay? Because God is putting you in a position of power to watch this, make judgments, to make decisions. That's what judgment means. It means to make a decision. And you and I need the wisdom to be able to choose the right from the wrong. All right, the up from the down, the left from the right. All right, we are supposed to have, we need the ability to do this and it only comes from God. It only comes from God. When we rely upon ourselves for the ability to make a conscientious decision between good and bad, between left and right, between right and wrong, between up and down, we oftentimes make bad choices because we are not, or have not been informed by God. Now watch this, Amos, Amos chapter five, verse 15 says this. Amos five fifteen says this, hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate. It may be that the Lord of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Now watch this, hate the evil and love the good and thereby establish judgment in the gate. This is very, very important. This is how you establish justice. This is how you establish true discernment, true judgment, true decision-making, proper decision-making. This is how you establish governance, hate evil and loving good, okay? to hate evil and to love good. That is how you establish judgment and justice and governance, proper governance. In other words, you gain the ability to judge or to rule by way of making the right discernment between right 
and wrong. Okay, is that clear? You, this is how you are supposed to gain <laughs> the way into a position of strength, power, rulership, whatever you want to call it, a position of authority. It comes from your ability, okay, to be able to discern between, or your willingness, I should say, to be able to discern between good and evil, between right and wrong, between your left hand and your right hand. You must be able to discern that or else you should not be, you should not be in governance. Unfortunately, we find that there are many people who are involved in government, who are involved in being in authority, in rulership, who have absolutely no discernment as to the difference between right and wrong. And we're gonna get there in just a second. <clears throat> to call men who do evil as being accepted by God and or to call them just or righteous or to claim that they are men of God who do wickedness openly is lying and deception at its highest level. If you and I claim somebody who is openly doing wickedness as somebody who is a man of God or a woman of God or somebody who is a representative of God and they are doing open evil. When I mean open evil is everybody knows it. I'm not saying that they're doing it on camera. I'm saying that everybody knows that, what, that they're doing evil. Everybody knows. It, it, it's, you can call it rumor. You can call it whatever it is. Everybody knows that the person is doing evil. Everybody can see it. It's readily able to be seen. Everybody knows it. And you come and you say, this person is a man of God. This person is a woman of God. This person knows the Lord. You are lying at the highest level. It is an abomination to do that. Okay? It is a great evil in the eyes of God and he will not stand for it very long. Malachi 2 verse 17 says this. Here's what Malachi chapter 2 verse 17 says. You have wearied the Lord with your words. Watch this, words, words. Yet you say, wherein have we wearied thee? How have we troubled you, Lord? How have we worn you out? He said, quote, watch this, this is God speaking. He said, when you say everyone that does evil is actually good in the sight of the Lord and God delights in them, or where is the judgment of God? <laughs> he said, here is where you weary me. Here is where you are testing my mercy and my grace. This is what he's saying to the people of God. Notice, now he's not talking to the world. He's talking to God, his own people. He's talking to the church, if you will. He's talking to the people who claim to be his own, who claim to be God's people. He's saying, you guys have wearied me. How, 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 how do we weary you? How, how do we do that, Lord? He said, every time you claim that somebody who does evil in my sight is actually my prophet, my servant, my good person, the person that I love, the person that I cover, the person that I protect. He said, every time you do that, you weary me. He said, and you make it as though I don't make a difference between good and evil. Mm -hmm. Ooh. He said, you make it to where the people in the land are saying, does God make a differentiation between what's right and what's wrong? You're making it as though I'm not God anymore. Ooh, 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 ouch. Mm. And if you think God is going to stand for that much longer, you're, you're crazy. Now, notice what happens. Notice what happens when justice is not meted out properly by those in charge. People start believing that God doesn't make any difference between those who seek to do good and those who participate and perpetrate evil. It's almost as if God is not even alive. It's almost as if God isn't even around. 
God has called us to make a difference between good and evil, between righteousness and wickedness, between holiness and foolishness. This is what a good and wise friend, a good and wise servant, a good and wise Lord or ruler or authority, president, prelate, congressman, you know, lawyer, pastor, elder, whoever. This is what they will do. And by the way, Proverbs chapter 17 basically is talking about the difference between a good friend and a bad friend. That's what the whole, in my opinion, that's what the whole entire proverb chapter of Proverbs 17 is discussing. It's telling us the difference between uh, a good person or a good uh, friend, if you will, and a wise friend and a foolish friend. Foolish friends, unwise friends or bad friends run around calling good people evil and wicked and trying to throw them in jail and calling bad people, wicked people, people who murder and lie and cheat and steal and rob and commit adultery and everything else, call them, oh, they're just one, oh, that's my best friend. Oh, they're wonderful. Oh, they're all, oh, they love the Lord. That is evil before God. And you are not being a good friend by doing that. You're not being a good neighbor. <laughs> You're being unwise. Now, I want you to see this, Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 1 says this, Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees, and that write grievousness which they have prescribed. In other words, they write complaints out of their own devising. I didn't tell them to write this stuff, but they're writing it. He says, woe unto them who decree unrighteous decrees. In other words, I have not instructed them to do what they're doing, but they're doing it anyhow. And what they're doing has influence over many people because they are in charge. They have power, they have strength. And they're instructing instructions that I never said do. God says, woe to them. Woe to them. That means watch out for the future because I'm coming. That's what that means. <laughs> Just to put it in today's vernacular. That means I'm coming, watch out. Okay? Because I'm coming to make the crooked path straight. Watch Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. Powerful verse here. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. Watch this. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 and 21. The Bible says... Woe unto them that call evil good and that call good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for the sweet and sweet for the bitter. Verse 21, woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. This, ladies and gentlemen, is what is called the principle of corruption. Literally, literally, hear me. This is the principle and the pinnacle of corruption, where literally living in an upside down world, you and I start calling evil good and good evil, start calling darkness light and light darkness. That is the pinnacle of corruption. Are you all with me? To protect evil and to condemn what is good. That is the pinnacle of evil and wickedness. The pinnacle, ladies and gentlemen. The pinnacle of corruption. When a system has gone to that level where a person who is doing wickedness that everybody can see and the system is calling that person good and then somebody who's trying to call out that bad, that wickedness, is now called evil and is put in jail, the system is completely corrupted and it must be destroyed. <sighs> because there's nothing you can do. There is literally no, there's no system of correction. 
The system of corruption has of correction has been corrupted and co-opted now to be used to declare that those who would speak truth are to be thrown in jail and murdered and killed and put away. And those who speak lies and deception and deceit are now put on the front stage with a microphone in their mouth. You see what I'm saying? So now there's absolutely no recourse to fix things, to right the ship, if you will. That's why that system must now be completely destroyed. Do you see? Do you see? Isaiah chapter 29, verses 15. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 15. Watch this. Woe unto them. Notice what God says. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. <laughs> and their works are in the dark. And they say, who sees us and who knows us? He said, woe to them because I'm coming. These people who do their dirt in the dark and they think that nobody can see them, that nobody can hear them, that nobody can view what they're doing. God says, I see everything you're doing. Many people think that they can lie to the Lord and actually pull the wool over God's eyes by hiding what they do. But this is not the case. This is not the case. For the book of Job informs us in Job chapter 34 and verse 21, for his eyes are upon the ways of man and he seeth all things. The Bible says in Psalm that the very hairs on our head are numbered. God knows when a new hair follicle pops up in your scalp. You think God doesn't know what you're doing? Lord have mercy. You and I lose a hair follicle every day in our brush or in our comb or whatever it is we use to put our hair together. God numbers every last one of those hair follicles. That's how intricately God knows you. So to the, the idea, the concept that I can hide who I am or what I'm doing from God just because men can't see me, men can't understand what I'm doing, God knows exactly what's going on. And you will meet it again. You will meet it again. Yes, yes, we will. Revelation chapter two and verse eight says this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Revelation chapter two and verse eight says this. Now, this is a powerful text and I need you to get this. I need you to get this because a lot. here's what a lot of people think. A lot of people think that well, you know, I'm not particularly wicked. I'm not terrible. I don't do really bad things. You know, oh, every once in a while, you know, I'll mess up or I'll do things that other people don't see or whatever. But, you know, I I'm generally a good person. I'm going to be fine. Me and God are tight. Watch this. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Revelation 21 and verse 8. This is the last book of the Bible. And it's talking about when God comes again, when Jesus comes again at the last day. It's talking about the judgment. When God makes a discernment between the good and the evil, of between who is saved and who is lost. Are y'all with me today? Who is going back to heaven with him and who is going to hell in a handbasket? Now watch this, I want you to see this. Revelation 21 and verse eight says this, but the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. He's saying everyone who's going to hell is going to be one of these categories. Fearful, unbelieving, abominable, a murderer, a whoremonger, filled with lust, sorcerers, okay, reaching out to sorcery and the occult. Are you all listening to me? Idolaters, people who worship idols instead of God. Now, you may say, you go through that list and you're like, oh, I'm none of that. I'm none of those things. 
Watch this. I love how John writes this in the Greek. He says, and all types of liars. <laughs> he says, all liars, not some, not most, not 99.9%, .9%, every liar on the planet. All liars, all deceivers, all people who make false judgments. Are you all listening to me today? Are going to have their part in the lake of fire. Lord have mercy. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go to the lake of fire. Amen. Amen. Somebody say amen. I want to go into everlasting life with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what I want to do. Isn't that what you want to do? I don't want to go to hell. I'm already living in hell. This is hell for me. I don't know about you, but this is hell for me, where every day I don't know how long I'm going to live. Every day I don't know how long I'm going to have the freedom that I have, whatever freedom that might be. Every day I have no idea how this situation is going to turn left or right, up or down. I have no idea which way this world is going to turn or switch. I have no idea what new pestilence is going to come. We're living in hell right now. We don't need no more hell. Somebody say amen. <laughs> okay? I'm looking for I'm looking for glory. I'm looking for everlasting life with my Lord and Savior. And God says, if you want to do that, you cannot be a liar. You cannot make false judgments and false discernments. You cannot make poor and bad decisions over people. You cannot claim that a wicked person is good and a bad person is awesome and that a good person, an innocent person is evil and deserves death. You can't do that. I'm not going to allow that. There's no way that person is going to move in with me, next door neighbor in glory. Come on, say amen. So who... That brings up a question. Who are the liars of this age? Who, who are the liars of this age? I'm going to bring this up from the Bible, and then I'm going to let you go this morning. Who are the liars of this age? Who are the liars of this age? Can I tell you who they are? I'm going to tell you who they are, and then I'm going to let you go this morning. I'm going to let you go. Number one, the liars of this age, number one, are those who claim they have no sin. That's number one. That's number one. Liars are those who claim they have no sin. I have no faults. I have no failures. There's no shadow of turning in me. I'm perfect. I'm awesome. I'm like a perfect circle. There's just nothing wrong with me. You're a liar. That's what the Bible says. Notice with me, 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9 and 10. 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. Here's what the Bible says. Here's what the Bible says. 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Notice the term. Notice the term. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves. We are in the process of deceiving ourselves. That's called lying. Are you with me this morning? And the truth is not in us. You see that? Lie, deception, and truth. It's right there. It's right there. He says, if you and I claim that we have no sin, if you and I claim I've never sinned, or I don't sin, or I, have, I don't have any sin, I don't have any failures, I don't have any weaknesses, I don't have any problems. No, I'm fine. If you and I make that claim, we are lying to ourselves and the truth is not with us. Verse nine, but if we confess our sins, you know what confession means? Confession in this particular context means to agree with God. If we agree with God that we are sinners as he has rightfully declared us to be, he Watch this. This is a powerful thought. I, I, I'm telling you, this text is incredible. If we agree with God 
in his just, just, you know, guesstimation, his estimation, his just <laughs> estimation. I'm making up a word here, estimation. If we agree with God in his righteous judgment of us, that we are sinners, that we have sinned against him, against heaven, and against our brothers and sisters on this planet. If we agree with him, if we confess it before God, here's what God says I'm gonna do. Watch this, I want you to see this, this is powerful. This is so powerful. He says, you're a part of a corrupted system that I'm about to destroy because there's no way for it to be fixed. He said, but if you confess that you're a part of that system, here's what I'm gonna do for you. Here's what I'm gonna do for you. Normally, I would just destroy all of you, but here's what I'm gonna do for you. He says, I'm gonna be faithful to my own word. He says, I'm faithful and I'm just to forgive you because of what you have done, because you have admitted that I'm right and you're wrong. I'm going to be faithful to my word that I told to your forefather, forefathers, and I am going to deliver you from it. I'm going to save you from my own wrath. <laughs> mm. I'm going to forgive you of your sins. And then watch this. Not only that, not only that, not only am I going to take away the punishment, he said, then I'm going to give you power to live right. I'm going to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Mm. Glory to God. Somebody say glory to God. Hallelujah. He says, I'm going to cleanse you from everything that would pull you back into that mess that you were in. I'm going to give you power over it. Isn't that awesome? He says, I'm going to keep you from being a liar. Glory to God. Somebody say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. I'm going to allow you to be a transparent person who follows after me. Somebody say amen to the word of God. Confess, confess. Somebody needs to confess today. Somebody needs to confess this morning. Lord, I'm a liar. I'm a cheater. I'm a robber. I'm a stealer. I'm an adulterer. Lord, I've done all these things and more. I confess. I agree with you. Your assessment of my life is absolutely 1,000% on the money. You hit the hammer with the, you hit the nail with the hammer on the head in my life. Lord, I confess. And God says, I'm faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you. Hallelujah from all unrighteousness. Notice verse 10. Notice verse 10. But if we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. Now, I don't want to make God a lie. What about you? If we walk around here, I'm talking about Christians today. I'm not just, I'm not talking about people out here in the world that don't even know God. I'm talking about you and I who know who God is. When we come out here, Talking about we know God and then we declare that we're free. We have no sin in our life. We have no uh, weaknesses. We have no infirmities. We have no problems. And we're higher and above and beyond everybody else. We're better than everybody else. We don't have any issues. We don't have any concern. When we, when we do that, we are calling God a liar to the world. We are calling God a liar to the world and his word is not living in us. We must confess. We must humble ourselves before his mighty hand. So the first liar are those who claim they have no sin. The second liar, the second liar, the second group of liars on this planet right now are those, watch this, are those who claim that they believe God and are the representatives of God, but do not do what God says. I'm going to write, I'm going to say that again. Those who claim that they, those who are liars today, number two, are those who claim that they believe God and are the representatives of God, but they do not do what God says. Are you listening to me today? These people who claim to be Christians today, followers of Christ, but don't do what God says, 
That's a liar. Notice with me, 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. 1 John chapter 2, verse 4. He that saith, I know him, and keeps not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. Now, God said it, I didn't. Do you think it's important for us to hear and listen to what God has to say? I think so. I think so. Do you think it's important for us not to go around talking about we're a follower of Christ, we love God, and we and, and then we're living lives that are completely the opposite of everything that God has expressed in his word? Do you think that there it matters? Do you think it makes a difference? You better believe it does, because when we lie, we make God a liar when we claim God's name on our lives. And if you think God's going to stand for that for very long, you're crazy. Lord have mercy. It's a wonder that God doesn't wipe some of us out. It's a wonder that God just doesn't wipe the face of the earth with our blood. I mean, seriously, it's unbelievable the mercy of God. The mercy of God to allow us to take his name on our vesture, on our lives, and continue to live in absolute dishonesty, dis Ill, Ill repute, lives in, in disrepair, just lying and cheating and robbing people and mistreating and abusing our, our offices. You know, more and more I'm seeing reports coming out about pastors who are abusing their privilege of being a, in a position of authority over the people of God by having sex with all kinds of people in the church, with children in the church. I'm seeing this all over the place and it doesn't matter what color, black, white, whatever. I mean, it's unbelievable that God doesn't just wipe the face of the earth with their blood. To have the nerve to claim to be God's man and you're sleeping with everybody in the church and their children, literally. Lord Jesus, help us. We need help. We, we need help. We need help today. We need help today. Okay? Serious help. So-called men of God. Child abusing. It's despicable and disgusting. And for anybody to in any way promote that or cover that up is just, is just as disgusting. But it's happening all over the world, all over, all over the United States, all over the world, in fact. People who claim to be God's man, God's woman, are abusing the privilege and using other people for their own personal lust practices. It's disgusting. Lord have mercy. And they're liars, God says. You're a liar. These people in government who claim that they stand up for the Christian rights and the Christian right and we're doing this and we're doing that. And they don't follow anything in the word of God. The word of God declares that we are to show deference to the weak and to the powerless. The word of God says that we are to protect the weak and the powerless and the poor and the impoverished, that we're supposed to help them. That's what the word of God says. We live in a nation that takes older people who have lost their ability to work and we throw them over in the side in the corner somewhere and we don't care nothing about them. And we're going to sit up here and say we're a Christian nation? Really? How is that possible? We're not following the word of God. Our elders should be people who are uplifted and honored and we should show deference to them. We should make room for them. Somebody say amen. They've worked all their lives and now they're in their latter years and we're going to throw them in a box somewhere and forget about them. But that's that's our world. That's our Christian nation. Are you all listening to me today? How are you going to say you a Christian and you don't follow my word? Lord have mercy. You are a liar and the truth is not in you. That's what God said. Notice with me. Notice with me. Number three, who are the liars in these last days? Anyone 
Anyone, watch this. Mm, mm, mm. I need to move quickly. Anyone with hatred in his heart against his fellow man. Anybody who has hatred in their heart for their fellow brothers and sisters out here. You are a liar. So watch this. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 20. If any man say, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loves not his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he has never seen? My God, that's that man. Listen, I could do 10 sermons on that one text right there. 10 sermons on that one text right there. You cannot hate your brother and sister and claim you love God. That That is a lie. You are a liar. Because God lets the rain fall on the just and the unjust. God is merciful. God is always forgiving. God is always kind. God is always seeking to treat others with love and with kindness. Are you all hearing me today? Boy, I know it's hot out here. I know it's hot. I know you need some water. You need some help, don't you? You need some help. Because mm, mm, mm. it's getting hot in here. <laughs> Come on, say amen. Woo! Listen to me, don't have hatred in your heart for your brothers and sisters. Respond to them with love and with kindness, just like God responds to you. God loves you with an everlasting love and God has never wiped you out. God has never backslapped you. God has never smacked you in the mouth or hit you upside the head. God's never done that. He should have, but he never has. So why would you treat anybody like, why would you treat your wife with total disrespect? Huh? And ill repute by hitting her, raising your hand against her. What in the heck is wrong with you? She's the weaker vessel. You're there to protect her, not to become the person that she needs to be protected from. But I love God. I love God. I go to church every, every week. That means I'm holy, but I'm whipping up on my children. I'm beating up on my wife. Really? You think God is just going to keep that, allowing you to, and that God's never, ever going to bring that up to you? You think that that's, he's just going to cover all that? Really? Mm, mm, mm. Well, I, I can't forgive them, Pastor. You don't know. I, I can't forgive them. They did me wrong in the church, and I just, I don't think it's right, and I don't, and it's just, and it's just terrible. Oh, you can't forgive anybody, really? So you, I guess you're expecting that God can't forgive you too, right? Oh, God can forgive you because you're better than them. Is that it? Don't get me started on this. I'll be here all day. I'm going to tell you right now. Y'all don't even know. Don't get me started on forgiveness. That's a whole nother app. Let me let it go. Listen. Love everybody, including your enemies, because that's what God does. Simple as that, plain and simple. And if you're going to say that you love God, then you're going to be and act like God. Moving on. Number four, <clears throat> number four. The liars of this age. Number four, and lastly, are those who deny that Jesus is the son of the living God. First John chapter two and verse 22 says this. Who is a liar, but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one, the one sent from heaven to deliver us from our sins. He, the one who speaks this lie, who denies that Jesus is the Christ, he is the antichrist that denies the father and the son. Why does he deny the father? By rejecting the son because the father is the one who sent the son. So you're rejecting him as well as the son. Mm, mm, mm. You know, I, there's a whole lot of theology I could go behind that. I'm not gonna do it though. I'm not gonna do it today. 
<laughs> you know, these people who say, oh, there's only one God, there's no son, there's no, you know, the son of God is not really hit the son of God. He's actually a human being and all this kind of stuff. You're denying the father. Because he sent his son. And you're saying he's not his son. Let me move on. That's a whole nother. Liars have forfeited their right to judge between good and evil, between right and wrong. They have absolutely no ability whatsoever to make judgments between anything because they are living inside of a lie themselves and they are being controlled by the enemy of God. I'm going to say this again. <clears throat> Liars have forfeited their right to judge between good and evil, between right and wrong. How? They have no ability whatsoever to make judgments between anything because they are living in a lie, and that means they're being controlled by the, by the enemy of God. I'm talking about the devil. Are you all with me today? Now turn with me very, very quickly because we need to move quickly here. Turn with me, turn with me quickly to John chapter 8. John chapter 8, reading verses 39 through 45. This is a story where the Pharisees and so forth came to Jesus and were trying to declare that he was wicked, that he was of the devil. And Jesus told them the absolute truth, uncut. Are y'all with me today? He told them uncut straight up what they, who they really were and what their deal is. And, he, and he, listen to me. He's declaring how it is that the devil gains control and possession of your heart and your life in this passage right here. John chapter 8, verses 39 through 45. And what I realize is, is that most of the world is possessed by the devil and don't even know it. I want you, and I'm talking about Christianity. I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about the world in terms of Christianity. Are you all, I'm talking about the religious world because they live inside of a lie. Now I want you to see this. John chapter eight, verse 39 and moving on and, and onward. They answered and said to him, these are the Pharisees, okay? And Sadducees, they come to Jesus and they said to him, Abraham's our father, Abraham's our dad. So we straight, we got the bloodline, we got the lineage. Because the promise was given to Abraham. So as long as we are in alignment with Abraham, as long as we're part of his family, we're part of his DNA, his lineage, hey, we're fine. We straight. We saved. We the most, you know, special people in God's eye. But Jesus returned and said to them, he responded and said to them, if you are Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Whew. Now notice. This is the fundamental principle of what a, a father and a son are. <laughs> oh, here's a fundamental principle Jesus is laying out of a relationship between a father and a son. A son does what the father does. <laughs> if you don't do what daddy does, you ain't no son. <laughs> let me move on. I, that's a whole nother. Let me move on. Okay, verse 40. But now seek, he said, but now watch this. He said, now you're seeking to kill me. Verse 40, a man that told you the truth. Now notice with me, notice with me, notice the language. Notice the language. He says, you're trying to kill me though. And I'm the one that's telling you the truth. Are you, are you watching this? Watch this. Talking about truth and error, lies and deception and truth. He said, you guys are trying to kill me when I'm the one that's trying to tell you the truth. Watch this, which I heard from God myself. This did not Abraham. Verse 41, you do the deeds of your father. Uh-oh. <laughs> he said, your daddy's not Abraham because if he was Abraham, you would do his works. He said, but you're actually doing the works and the deeds of your father. Who's he talking about? Let's move on. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Ooh, they're declaring God as their father. Now watch this. I want you to see this. <laughs> watch what Je Jesus does not miss words. He's straight up in their face with this. Verse 41. I'm sorry. Verse 42. Jesus said to them, 
if you were your father, if God were your father, excuse me, if God was your father, you would love me. For I came from the father, I proceeded from him and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Verse 43, why do you not understand my speech? Hear me, discernment, 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 the ability to judge, the ability to tell the difference between right and wrong, between good and evil. He said, you can't even understand what I'm saying to you. He said, you can't tell whether what I'm saying to you is good or bad. You can't judge what I'm saying, even because you cannot hear my word. Now, I want you to hear this. Here's what Jesus is saying. Jesus is saying, you guys are so tied up in a lie, in a deception created by the devil that you have accepted that you can't even hear what I'm saying to you, much less understand it. <laughs> mm, mm, mm. This is why it's so important to follow truth when you get it. When God sends you truth, you got to follow it. You, you, you can't reject it because anytime you start rejecting truth, you're starting to live in a lie and you're giving the enemy of God an anchor to hold on to you. And it comes to eventually a point where you can't even hear God speaking to you. You can't even understand what he's saying. So watch this. Verse 44. You are actually of your father, the devil. <laughs> and the lusts of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and he did not live in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, he speaks a lie. He speaks of his own. Watch this, watch this. Lies come from speaking in and of yourself. <laughs> Where you have no influence from God. You have no uh, 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 injection of the word of God. You're just talking for yourself. If you were just out here speaking for yourself, talking for yourself, you ain't nothing but a liar. That's a whole nother truth. I can't even go there. He said he speaks for himself. That's why he's a liar. He is a liar and the father of it. And because I'm telling you this truth, you don't even believe me. Verse 45. Whew. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I don't want to live in a lie anymore. I, I, I don't want to live in a lie anymore. I don't want to be of the devil. I want to be a son of the king, of the master of the ruler of all things. I want to be a son of God, not a son of the devil. Come on, say amen. Who is a liar and the, tr and, and, and the father of it, the truth is never in him because he always speaks of his own self. People who are always, watch this, I want you to hear this. People who are always more concerned about themselves than they are about anybody else are people who ultimately will wind up being liars, deceivers, and deception. And they will follow the pattern and the works of their father, the enemy of God, because they do not want to hear the truth because the truth would set them free. And they don't want to be free, even though they claim that it is freedom to do what they're doing. Lord have mercy. Finally, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Gotta let you go, I got one minute left. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14 says this. Let us hear the whole conclusion of the entire matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Ladies and gentlemen, God is not sleep. God has not taken a vacation and God is not blind that he can't see what's going on. God knows everything and he's going to bring every work, including the secret things, the things that are hidden from everybody else, the things that you have in your heart that you wanna do but you couldn't do because you didn't have the power to do it. 
God is going to bring all that to the exposure of the entire universe. Unless you and I confess and forsake. I want to confess today. I'm a sinner. I'm a liar. I'm a cheat. Lord, I am no good in your sight. So I rest upon your mercy and your grace today. And I ask you to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. That's our prayer this morning. What do you say? Let's pray. Father God, thank you for your grace and mercy. Thank you for your love. Father, we admit that we are sinners in need of a savior this morning. We are sinners in need of your mercy and grace. God, cleanse us by the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify our minds and our hearts, Lord. Make us holy and righteous unto you. Make us sons and daughters of the king and the kingdom, O God. And let us no longer, Lord, be led astray by the enemy or any of his forces. But Lord, help us to live in the light and in the truth of your word. For this is what is most imperative in these last days. Give us your grace and mercy, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I praise God for you. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. If it has, please like it and share it on your page and subscribe if you haven't already to the uh, PTPOG, Practicing the Presence of God, Facebook uh, page. We would love to have you. And also, if you are on YouTube, please leave a comment after this uh uh, after uh, listening to this, leave a comment and I would love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions as to what we can do better, please leave a comment and let me know. I would love to hear from you. I will definitely respond. I really appreciate so much those of you who all uh, every day you come on and you listen and you come out and be a part of the PTPOG family. God be with you. God bless you. If you're on YouTube watching this, please, please subscribe to my channel so that I can get at least a thousand subscribers and we can move forward and do the things that we really want to do, which is some incredible uh, things that I really want to do uh, in terms of expanding the channel and so forth. So anyway, with that being said, God bless. I love you with the love of the Lord. Take care. Have a wonderful, good, and awesome day. And may the Lord watch between me and you while we're separated briefly one from another. And always remember though, don't ever forget P-P-P-O-G Practice the presence of God In your daily life I promise you God promises you He will make you wise Wise enough to make good decisions Proper decisions Holy decisions Righteous decisions And he will keep you and I From being a liar In Jesus name Amen God bless We'll see you soon Bye bye